<clears throat> I hope you all see my screen. Uh, let's start with the demo session now. Right. <clears throat> First of all, uh, let me just give you a little introduction about myself. I, I am Dilip and I have over eight years of experience and uh, uh, from last five years, I'm into Velocity. And uh, I have worked across various projects, especially into telecom domain for uh, quite a few, uh, quite a while now. Yeah. <clears throat> and I have over more than a year of experience in uh, tra training in Velocity. Uh, right. So uh, let's start with uh, understanding what exactly is velocity and how, uh, you know, uh, it has grown to such a level that now Salesforce themselves have acquired velocity. And uh, yeah, now the owner of the uh, whole and sole owner of the velocity uh, is Salesforce. And yeah, let's just try to understand a bit uh, more uh, on that. Right. <clears throat> Velocity is something, uh, if you term, if you speak in technical terms, it is nothing but a managed package in Velocity, yes, or in Salesforce, right? You will be able to download this managed package and once you buy all the required licenses, you would be, uh, uh, yeah, you'd be able to start working uh, with Velocity, right? So if you generally speak about it it's uh, velocity has been built on sale on top of salesforce using all the functionalities or provided by salesforce velocity has themselves built a platform and they are providing it as us which we can use for further development of an ap application right so uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah so let's start yeah, so today we are going to see about what exactly is Velocity and how it is working in parallel with Salesforce and what exactly uh, Velocity, you know, tries to market themselves as an industry cloud uh, specific thing, right? So what exactly uh, it means, industry cloud uh, basically means. And we'll try to understand what are the advantages of using Velocity and we we'll try to understand certain Velocity components which are provided by them and we'll see you know certain other things right right so usually uh, any cloud not just in salesforce any cloud platform uh, usually provides two dif three different services right uh, i think i hope you must be aware of this a, a bit so ias is nothing but the top layer of this whole uh, mvc multi tenant architecture right so it basically uh, IAS means it just provides any cloud service that provides infrastructure as a service, which basically means uh, storage or the servers or these networks. These all together is called infrastructure. And utilizing this, if you try to build some software or a platform or something. Uh, and next, the next layer would be your PaaS. PaaS means platform as a service, which basically means uh, it utilizing this. Uh, infrastructure provided by a cloud uh, cloud service they try to build a platform so that that can be used by you know uh, developers or you know and uh, that can be used uh, by these people and they can build an application for end clients right so examples would be uh, in you know viva crm that is something built for specifically for pharmaceutical industry and velocity is uh, again a pass and uh, Tableau or CPQ, all of these are built on Salesforce by using the infrastructure provided by Salesforce and they are providing as a platform. So we can use that platform and build an application. And finally, SaaS is the actual thing which we all do in Salesforce, right? We build an application and uh, or a software and deliver it to a uh, end customer and they can uh, use directly without having any internet or, I mean, sorry, without having any uh, uh, you know, installation of uh, that any so specific software required. They can directly use it over internet, right? So Velocity here is using the pass and ultimately we'd be using that to deliver the SaaS capability, right? Right. 
So now let's try to, un uh, now we have uh, learned about what exactly is velocity when it uh, comes to Salesforce, right? Now we'll see, uh, dig a little deeper into that. So as uh, uh, I hope now you understand that velocity is a managed package in Salesforce, right? Which uses the past capability of Salesforce and provide uh, providing us a platform to, uh, uh, providing us the developers, a platform to, you know, build an application and provide it to the customers, right? Now, uh, Velocity is nothing but it's built natively on Salesforce, which basically means it uses standard Salesforce objects or it uses standard Salesforce functionality to build this platform, right? For example, in most of the scenarios, they are using Visual Force pages and uh, they have their code written on from their side. So all we do is once we install the package, we can simply directly use that. Uh, those particular uh, VF page screens or whatever, right? For our developer convenience. And yeah, when we say that Velocity is an industry uh, cloud, uh, you know, domain, right? What exactly is that, right? So let's understand the, you know, hot topic right now, right? It's like for a coronavirus, we have this vaccine. Right, and multiple companies are generating, uh, providing these, uh, producing these vaccines, and we are available in the market. Usually, how that goes in, uh, you know, pharma industry, right? Maybe in India, it's a little different, where, uh, you know, without any prescription or anything, we can go to any medical shop and we can get the uh, uh, medicines or drugs. But that's not the case in, you know, like let's say North America or Europe. You have to provide the prescription and there are certain restrictions on in each state for using a particular product and all. And these pharma companies go through a lot of process, right? So generally uh, what happens in this whole scenario? First of all, let's say, let's talk about Pfizer, right? They have produced a vaccine for coronavirus, right? So Pfizer, what they do initially is for any, you know, these kind of virus or anything that uh, happens, right? they try to take it, uh, I mean, start testing on it, uh, get all the, you know, process from their side. And finally, they produce a prototype and that prototype goes through a lot of clinical trials. Once that is successful, then uh, they uh, publish these results and they go there, they have sales representatives who go to doctors, and uh, uh, who go to hospitals and who try to you know make a visit to them and there <clears throat> and uh, they'll try to explain their products the side effects on all of these right and once the doctors uh, you know think this product is okay they'll do some samples and once uh, they find that it's all good then they start prescribing these particular drugs right so this is how a pharma industry comes into the market and this is how they increase their market. They use sales representatives. Those who go to, uh, uh, those people go to uh, your <clears throat> hospitals and doctors and they uh, provide the samples and everything. And then the doctors start prescribing this particular company's medicine. For example, there are a lot of uh, medicines available for code, right? So multiple companies produce that. So how they uh, these companies increase their market is this way. So. This, there is a whole lot of process that goes in this pharma industry, right? Whatever the application they use, whatever the platform they use, ultimately the business flow is always going to be the same, right? So you may use Java to build your application. You may use .NET to use build your application. You may use Salesforce. You may use Velocity. Whatever it is, ultimately the back <clears throat> the back end business flow is always going to be the same. It's just the application platform that differs, but the business flow is always going to say, be the same thing, right? So that's why uh, there is something called Viva CRM who uh, you know, understood this, this whole process of pharmaceutical industry. And they gave up, uh, they created a platform in Salesforce and <clears throat> we use that Viva CRM as a platform to build the application. So similarly, Velocity also has done, not just for one uh, domain, they have they are working for you know more than you know six domains as of now but yeah they are spreading it over more than you know 10 to 15 uh, domains right now right the prominent domains as of now in <clears throat> velocity are cmt which is communications media and telecom right 
and entertainment and energy and utilities and insurance and health these are the you know uh, domains they are you know especially doing great right when it comes to telecom you can say that's the topmost one and there are more than you know around 70 to 80 clients just in telecom for velocity right so like yeah let's uh, try to understand little more into uh, you know what exactly velocity is doing for example a telecom domain uh, let's understand the flow of the telecom domain right uh, again here when i whenever we talk about this uh, domain specific thing just think about how the flow goes in you know outside asia in asia it's a little different outside asia it is a little different so usually usually these customers go to these telecom company websites they uh, they create an account for themselves they go through the products of these companies and eventually uh, uh, they give all the, uh, their required details and documents they buy a sim card they buy a mobile number i mean they basically choose a mobile number and eventually pro proceed on to payment and the sim card gets delivered to the customer right this is how usually the flow goes for a telecom domain right so for this purpose velocity is using certain salesforce uh, related features right salesforce features and then building a platform for example in telecom domain especially what they would require is uh, <clears throat> what they uh, used to build uh, a platform in salesforce is uh, you uh, you all must be aware of this product object and uh, order object order line items and assets so velocity use is using certain of these standard objects and already with uh, with the already existing data model velocity has built created few more additional objects and you know added these relationships of their own and ultimately providing us the strong data model which is uh, which can be used across the companies for in a specific domain right so for example there is vodafone which recently started to work with velocity and there is verizon you know there is there are so many other uh, other uh, telecom companies right so their business flow is going to be the same the data model they all use is going to be the same It's just that each application has a different way of going in the UI or something like that. For example, I'll show you two of the examples for a telecom website. Right, this is one of the telecom company, a uh, Singapore-based telecom company, which is entirely built on Velocity. Uh, uh, this M1 Telecom uh, is that Singapore-based client. Right, if you just see here. in the first it was more of a home page and then next we we are seeing this product like type of data which you want to choose yeah uh, you can choose uh, your product i mean based on your needs you can choose certain add-ons you can proceed and choose a number I mean, this is actual website. You can, you yourself can go and search for M1 Telecom, and you'll be able to get this. And it's an order review page. Once I proceed here, they may ask me to log in. If I am a new user, then they may ask me to create a account for themselves. And ultimately, I'll be proceeding to payment, and I'll buy this product. And eventually, this SIM gets delivered to me with this mobile number. Right? That's the flow here. and if you take visible visible is a verizon subsidiary right here you have an option to buy a phone or also like in us this is how most of companies work like they sell mobile phones along with the plans and all you can choose any mobile right on choosing a mobile automatically uh, you will get your a uh, sim card and everything yeah with a plan and a sim card right and once i click on continue it may ask my account details if i am not an existing customer then i may create one account immediately here by filling all these details 
and yeah eventually i proceed to the payment you see they have a different methods i mean different uh, ui and different way they approach the uh, you know their whole thing but ultimately it's the business flow is going to be the same right once a customer comes in you will be able to choose a product among their you know a selection and user can pick one and you can proceed and pick a sim card or and something and finally you can do the payment and uh, th that creates an order in uh, salesforce right so that's how these all companies work so the business flow is same it's just that ui is a little different and you know the way they approached is a little different right <clears throat> so that's how uh, each industry uh, for each industry velocity has built a data model uh, on top of salesforce existing data model and is providing certain other functionalities uh, which we can use right we'll discuss in detail about all of these right so for example there is come an insurance domain insurance domain is also you know kind of uh, you know fast growing in velocity uh, it it has around 50 plus clients there and in insurance also it's like mostly uh, everything revolves around quote based on the uh, user selection of policy in the front end right maybe user would be choosing a policy uh, he may choose number of more beneficiaries or you may choose different type of claim or something based on that in the back end we would be creating a quote object and quote line items object something like that right so these are state salesforce standard objects but velocity using the existing uh, data model and creating their own data model on top of that and providing to us So these are a few customers of Velocity which, who are using, you know, currently, right? Like in CMT particularly, there are Verizon, Rogers Communication, British Telecom, Tellers, all these things. Vodafone has recently started, right? Uh, in insurance also, there are quite a few clients and even for that matter, government also, in government sector also, New Zealand and Canada and parts of US, you know, few states of US governments are using these domains. Let's see why they are all using a velocity. Why not just simply go for Salesforce? Right? We'll start understanding that. First thing is by using velocity, right? Sales, uh, why Salesforce is growing so fast along with these major, uh, you know, cloud companies like uh, you know Amazon or Microsoft or other companies, Google, right? How come they are competing so good is because they have a strong sales data model, right? You might be all aware of this opportunity, leads, uh, contacts, accounts, users, how this whole sales process goes, right? So that's actually a kind of strong one. And that's why more, uh, and uh, it fits almost every client, you know, across the domains, right? So Velocity is using that strong data model and building, you know, few other uh, things. For example, in telecom domain, right? Whatever I do on the front end over here, once I click on maybe create account, it creates an order record in the back end here, right? With the the number of products I choose are created as order line items for that order. So this way, uh, we are using the existing standard data model, and we have like certain other things like you'll have a promo code or you'll have a referral code or you have some promotions that are applied or some kind of discount you would get. So all these extra, uh, you know, for to make sure these extra features fit into Velo uh, this telecom domain, Velocity has created certain other objects and relationships, right? So next thing is uh, development becomes too fast, right? I'll show you how, uh, you know, simple it is, uh, you know, going forward, uh, it's like, you can build some complex business logics using uh, and complex functionalities in a very uh, you know a fast way. I'll I'll I uh, will discuss about why that becomes faster going ahead, right? Yeah, and to, in order to integrate with an external system, we usually take some time, right? We have to write an Apex code and we have to do a bit of you know uh, uh, positive negative scenarios, all these things and all, right? So it usually takes a, a quite a bit of time to integrate with other system when it comes to Salesforce. But Velocity 
I can show you it hardly takes less than 10 minutes to integrate with an Excel system, right? If you are good, uh, uh, is if you know velocity a little bit, you can hardly do it in under five minutes. And next thing is velocity uses JSON format for data processing, right? Which is very easy to understand, which is very fast in processing and it, which is a very lightweight language, right? Uh, you don't need to know, uh, like learn JSON or something. All you do is like start working with it and just like that you'll understand. It's nothing, there is nothing complex over there. The moment you see, you'll be able to understand what is happening over there, right? It's that simple. And JSON is very fast processing because of its lightweight, right? These are few advantages of using velocity and we'll see there are certain specific standard features that comes out of the box from velocity that makes the clients more exciting, right? First thing is order capture journey, right? So what exactly this means is the moment any, uh, for any online you know, sales platform, any e-commerce, right? Right, be it Amazon or be it Flipkart or you know whatever it is, if they are selling a product online. They there are it's basically you know divided into two parts. Right, from the time the customer comes into your website till he does the payment, that whole process is called order capture. Right, and from the time the customer does the payment till the product actually gets delivered to the customer, that whole process is called order management. Right, so Velocity is providing certain features in these two uh, specific areas, right? Which are like kind of robust and which are very dynamic, you know? So you, you can configure it in a very dynamic way, which fits exactly into your, you know, uh, requirement, right? So as I said, for example, if I go to Amazon, right? I go and I simply choose something. I go, I add a particular product to my cart. I go to this cart, I proceed to buy. And when I, when they ask me to, yeah, when they ask me to proceed, uh, uh, basically they are going to ask my login. If I'm new customer, then I should be giving my new details. And once, uh, new, uh, once I give all those details and create an account, I'll do the payment and that's how an order goes. So in this whole process, what happened is, Amazon website is letting you choose the product and taking some details about your selection and taking some details about your, uh, you know, basic information and eventually creating an order in the back end, right? So what is happening here is they're capturing the information that is required to fulfill an order, right? So that's why this whole process from the time a user, any uh, user enters into any e-commerce website, till the time he makes the payment, right? That whole process is called order capture, right? So Velocity is giving certain declarative approach, uh, you know, components that you can use to build order capture journey, right? Uh, usually in order to build a, you know, web page, let's say you are using communities and you need, you know, certain lightning components or VF page components or LWC components, you know, and you add all of those components and then you'll publish that community and that will be used as a web page, website uh, for external users, something like that, right? So you need to create a lot of, you know, front-end and back-end logics in, when you're using Salesforce, right? All of that require a lot of programmatic skills. But trust me, when you start using Velocity, it provides you certain uh, uh, components that are like a replacement for Salesforce components, which makes the developer's life very easy. For example, uh, there is something called Omniscript in Velocity, which is provided by them. 
it's like a like for like replacement of a vf page or lightning component and all of that in a configurable way right whatever you do in your vf page or lightning component you can do almost the same thing using an omni script and everything in a declarative approach you don't require a single line of code that's the speciality about it right and you usually use a lot of uh, uh, to build the uh, backend logic, you need a lot of Apex classes, Apex triggers, and you know all these things, which requires again a lot of coding, right? There is something called integration procedures provided by Velocity, which is like a like-for-like -like replacement of Apex class. Whatever you are doing in Apex class, right? Having those for loops, if loops, and you know, using those try-catch blocks or performing a lot of you know DML operations or queries or making some integration calls. All of this can be done using an integration procedure and it's entirely declarative. Right? That's, that way you can build complex logics and um, build business flows entirely using the declarative approach. As I said, this is one of the client which is using entirely Velocity, M1 Telecom. Right? The whole web page you saw until now has been built on Velocity and most of it is a configurable way. They built most of this in a configurable way, right? Yeah, that's another thing. We'll see uh, little details into them uh, in some time, yeah. And next thing Velocity is providing is the robust and dynamic order management process, which is called orchestration and de decomposition, right? For example, if I buy a product in Amazon, Let's, buy, let's say I bought a, a mobile phone. Uh, Amazon's job is not done the moment I order it, right? Their job is done only after they deliver the product, right? So that means from the time I do the payment till the product actually gets delivered to them, it may go through a lot of process, right? <coughs> Maybe once they order, they may check the inventory and if uh, the they check the nearest inventory to that particular customer, which has that product available. And once it is available, they, uh, you know, send, uh, send, uh, like they uh, dispatch the mobile from there and it goes to the delivery agent and eventually it gets uh, shipped to the nearest, you know, hub to the customer. And from there, a, de a delivery executive comes and deliver the product, right? So it is going through a lot of process in the backend, right? That whole process is called order management. And Velocity is providing us something uh, called orchestration and decomposition. These, using these functionalities, again, you can build a complex backend logic, right? All of that using only configuration, right? You can business, uh, you can build an entire uh, backend flow, right? What happens after the, uh, you, after the users create the order? Right? That entire business flow can be created using orchestrations and decompositions in a most dynamic way. Right? So uh, I hope you all are getting something. Uh, if you have any questions, you can let me know now before we proceed on further. Okay, uh, let's proceed. So there is next thing they're giving us is enterprise product catalog, right? Uh, as a developer, you it's uh, better if you know all of these things at least, right? <clears throat> For example, some who are into velocity, they most probably may use only order capture or order management, right? But these other features are also required uh, at least, you know, you'll have a better chance if you're trying to crack an interview or something, right? So they're providing a product, enterprise product catalog, right? Which is basically for every company, uh, even um, that matter for Amazon also, they need to manage their products, how, you know, in how they have to create a, a basically a, a record in the back end for these products and how they display it in the front end how they basically deal with all these products and everything, right? So for that entire uh, <clears throat> thing, 
uh, Velocity is giving us a featured something called uh, Enterprise Product Catalog, EPC, right? So it is giving us certain functionality, right? It uses the standard Salesforce product catalog object and uh, adding a lot more functionality to that. And uh, we can configure our products in a very more uh, dynamic way, right? Uh, which can be, you know, kind of very flexible, you know, you can configure your products in that way. For example, uh, you see certain offers, right? When you're buying a product, right? For example, if I buy a product, you see, uh, if I'm buying this mobile phone, they say like, buy these Oppo head, uh, headphones as well. Together, they'll cost a little less, right? So that means you're buy, buying a, a group of products, right? So that basically means you're cor configuring a product bundle in the back end, back end, right? A bundle of products together. So this way, you can create a most flexible and dynamic product catalog using this EPC of Velocity, right? And yeah, and the next thing is Velocity CPQ. Yeah, it uses CPQ. Uh, I mean, uh, there is another managed package like C Velo uh, CPQ, right? So Velocity is using uh, Salesforce and CPQ together here and providing us certain additional features for all the pricing related, right? As I said before, for example, uh, this product costs us 10,990. Right, so this has to be configured at some place, right? And there could be some pricing details, right? If I choose a 128 GB, this should be different. If I choose a 4 GB, uh, 8 GB RAM, then this should this price should change accordingly, right? And uh, as we spoke earlier, if we buy a bundle of products, for example, uh, for some products, it provides us, uh, let's say. Yeah, you see this frequently bought together, right? So sometimes what they show is a mobile phone, maybe a cover, SIM card, or, I mean, mobile cover case or all these things. Together, if you buy these, it may cost a little less. If you buy them individually, it, will, it may cost you a little more, right? So the prices have to be overridden there, right? So this way you can use Velocity CPQ to again configure a flexible and dynamic pricing. And there is something again called digital commerce APIs and card-based APIs. These are again, uh, nothing but uh, there could be certain functionalities which are across these domains. Uh, there could be certain functionalities which are basically can be reused, right? And which are common for almost every client they use, right? For example, uh, in the front end, you're taking all the details uh, for an account, and in the back end, you should be creating a, a, a actual account in Salesforce, right? For you know, if you're using communities, then you have to create account, contact, and user, right? So for this whole thing, usually you require again a coding, right? Or you at least you have to use some declarative components provided by Velocity in order to do that. But what Velocity is doing is they were they are providing these kind of you know, uh, uh, common functionalities as an API. All you have to do is pass your input to that API and call that API. It automatically takes care of the entire functionality. It, for example, if you have to create an order record in Salesforce, you have to worry about a lot of things, right? You have to worry about price book, price list, price list entries, uh, you know, products, all these things, right? Once you have all these, again, you require, you know, lots of lines of code in order to convert your uh, whole cart into your order and order line items in Salesforce, right? So instead of doing that, you can simply call, you know, these APIs, it will take care of that in the back end and it provides us with a proper response, right? And yeah, uh, industry specific data models is again, another thing which is provided by Velocity. This maybe I'll get to know when you actually start working in Velocity uh, because it's going to be a little harsh otherwise. Uh, now, uh, right. Now we'll see about uh, Velocity components that we uh, 
get uh, right uh, when we spoke about this declarative approach to build both front end and back end logics right so these are the components that are provided by velocity two sets of components interaction tools and data tools so let's talk about this interaction tools first thing is omniscript right as i said this entire screen you are seeing this whole process all of these multiple screens you are seeing it's all built on omniscripts this whole web application is built on omniscripts right so basically all of that using only simple configuration right uh, you can build so complex functionalities using omniscripts yet it will be easy for developer for example you see this particular page right number page where you have either picking a new number or going for a port in option see this is that page right and this entirely it is built on velocity and entirely built on omniscript and you can see how uh, this whole omniscript is right there are certain components that are provided by velocity using those you can configure them in a way you want and without using a single line of code in all of this right entire page we built uh, this whole page without using any uh, kind of code both front end and back end for example if you see here this is a, a api call which is being made right every time you load this page it displays as a new set of numbers right so this is an api call and it has kind of a, this kind of ui functionality on picking any number it highlights it and all and again here in the previous page there is actually a, a another api call where you give your zip code and it retrieves the address so this is another api call and delivery date again there is a kind of functionality which only shows the next 7 days here and delivery time also based on your selection of this it has again a separate logic right and yeah this i have at a store basically this is for pickup so that also displays uh, this is again an api call which retrieves the nearest locations by for the user and there is another functionality here for port in options the moment you enter it gets validated that's another api call and the number you pick that should be reserved right so that it will not be available for some other users right? that is another api call so you see there is a whole lot of front end and back end logics that happen that are happening and a whole lot of around more than 6 api calls that are being made and all of this entire functionality has been built only on uh, using declarative approach and not even a single line of code has been used right and if you think about it to build this entire page right how much time you usually take when you go with salesforce or in for that matter any other platform right it, it is at least going to take a month to build right all of this building these so many ab calls and both building front end and back end logics right i i would say at least more than two or three sprints right but this entire page has been built along with both front end and back end logic in under you know one sprint like just in two weeks right so that's how simple the development becomes and that how that how easy the developer lives uh, become when you start using uh, you know velocity <clears throat> yeah dilip yeah yeah as a developers we have to build this omni script or yes yeah we'll we'll have to build this omni script actually on the left hand side you see something called available components right so those are the things that are provided by velocity for example there is a checkbox if you want to checkbox if you want a checkbox field on the ui for example uh, here yeah here this is a checkbox right but it has this text that is available and all so basically velocity provides us that checkbox right you okay. can use that checkbox and configure it in a way you want right 
adding some text to that checkbox or making some you know changes to that okay so, so we'll as a developer as yeah. a developer so we can change that sir right yeah all we have to do is make sure that that velocity provided components work in a way you want that's okay. all okay for example uh, this here you see this pick new number and keep my existing number right this is actually a radio button which which is configured in a way to look like that right so that's yeah. how so all you have to do is velocity is providing a whole lot of components over here which can perform both front end and back end logics right all you have to do is use these existing components these are all uh, uh, reusable uh, you know basically these are all components provided by velocity you can use all of this and configure in a way you want right you can uh, that particular thing we saw pick new number and keep my existing number this is a radio button see this uh, shows that it is a radio right so it has been configured i mean on the right hand side you see right this is properties so in the properties all you have to do is choose what kind of uh, you know feel you want it to be whether you want to make it a required or whether you want to make it a read only or you want to provide some help text or how you want to display the options whether in horizontal or vertical way what are your options what is your default option all these things so each element or uh, they provide on this left hand side will have their own properties and you all you have to do is configure it in a way it is it, it's going to work for you okay so yes per our user stories we can change this only we can do the yes. change yes exactly okay. if they your client ask you to build a form where users can enter these kind of information like first name last name email phone number address all these things you can come here and create a omni script there as per your requirement maybe i would need just a second yeah yeah to accept a phone number i may use a number field right to accept a password i may use a password field right it's uh, for example there is a field called gender right there i can give a radio button and yeah this way i can configure my entire ui using these already you know pro, uh, uh, elements provided by velocity and configure them in a way you want and build the entire ui screen and here there is no need of using any kind of code for example the same thing needs some kind of code when you are building in lightning or uh, uh, visual force right but all of that right. doesn't require anything and especially all of these things require back end logic right even if you build a lightning component you need a lightning apex controller which takes care of the back end logic right so that also can be built using uh, uh, you know certain elements and all you have to do is configure in a way you want them to work right for example you want to extract some data from some object all you have to do is define which object and what are the fields you want to extract and it takes care of that automatically in the back end you don't have to require again an apex class and a sql query and all right so this is that page where uh, i mean this whole functionality has been implemented so that's how you build complex i mean when you see in a website you feel that okay this is very complex for example if you see here in amazon also you see like okay this is complex and it has lot of things on the ui and all but it's all quite simple when it comes to when you start using velocity right so that's pretty much about your omni script you can omni script the name itself means omni means guided flow that's the definition of it right omni script means you create a script which follows a guided path right so basically if you see any e-commerce companies right you don't see a back button there that's kind of their strategy right they don't let you go back their only way is either go forward or close it if you want to go back you all, all you can do is click this browser back button but there is no other way right 
so that's kind of a strategy they follow so all that um, right uh, and for example this is one web uh, web page where you can choose your smartphones right this is another web page where you can see the cart right where you can see your order and order details right so these are different web pages that are built so in order to build those different web pages you can use an omni script right the entire ui flow doesn't require any kind of code right to build the whole ui flow i mean there are some places we'll talk about that as well right and next thing is the cards it right? just like how omni script is there to build these web pages right in order to build a business flow right guided so uh, there is something called cards as well cards is nothing but uh, it is basically used to display uh, the whole view of a customer right for example if there is a customer and uh, this is specially built for customer care uh, you know purposes right if you call in vodafone and uh, say that i want to update my alternate contact number in that case first they'll ask they'll verify your account whether you are genuine customer or not once you give your mobile number or account number something uh, they'll verify whether it is you or not once they verify it they will yeah proceed with whatever you asked right for customer care care agent it's always better to show as much information as possible in one single screen so that's exactly why cards is there in the picture right you can see this is one particular screen where which is built specifically for a telecom company and this is uh, called a card right here you are seeing a, a picture of your customer and you know account details of your customer the recent orders the current mobile plan he has which is active and the handset which is using which he is using and you know there are a lot of other buttons which can perform certain actions right so all of this you can build in one single screen so that when a customer calls into a customer care customer care agent should not be you know worried where to go and what to do right everything should be there in front of them so that simply they can perform certain action right so for that purpose we have cards right <clears throat> so that is also yeah i would say uh, it is not entirely uh, uh, no code kind of thing it requires ui uh, coding right uh, we'll talk about that as well so but most of the thing can be built in uh, using in uh, without any code right this is another example of a insurance client using card you can see how various types of policies and various cust uh, beneficiaries and now the customer details all of that is being seen here and various types of buttons that can perform certain actions right and next comes your templates right templates is the only place where you use code in velocity right uh, as i just said like uh, in while talking about cards or omni script there are certain places where you may have to use code that is templates and this is not all at all related to salesforce templates require angular javascript code right so most of the projects which are using these omni scripts right they will have a separate ui team uh, so that's the most probable scenario because Uh, uh, templates is entirely different it is entirely on the angular javascript part right uh, so for example the best example to say this is any application you build in salesforce is going to give you this light blue color and white background right so whatever you see here is basically uh, black uh, uh, sorry white and blue right so they fo follow this kind of template again if you see facebook they have a common theme of blue right whatever you do is in blue but certain clients want i mean for example you see uh, there are certain applications in facebook right uh, saying like which marvel ca character you look like or which uh, hollywood actor you look like something these apps right so they have their own color themes or their own front end right 
how are they doing it basically by adding that extra little template extra little ui code right if you use the default facebook one you your application is going to look entirely in the blue but if you uh, use uh, this extra little uh, ui rich, uh, coding in that in those scenarios you have to uh, go for templates so so the same thing is uh, applicable in velocity as well for example this is a pick list uh, sorry this is a radio button right but uh, you see there is a little orange line that is coming uh, whenever i choose a particular option that is again a little bit extra little coding a ui template that has been added there and here you can see there is this orange thing that also here you can see this checkbox is coming in a little bit orange right and here you see on selection this is getting highlighted in orange right so this kind of if you want any extra little uh, uh, ui richness right those cases you go for velocity templates which is entirely which entirely rix uh, requires angular javascript code right so most probably there is a high chance that your projects i mean if you are into a velocity project they'll have a separate ui team because like for example you need to build an application uh, for in android or ios right for example all these mobile companies as well will have a mobile app right so they will be built on android or ios so definitely the front end team is obviously going to be a different one so the back end right uh, whatever the front end is the back end still would be velocity we would always be the same yeah so most probably there is a high chance that you have a separate team who handles this ui part it's been almost 5 years for me in velocity but never i had to work on these templates and yeah that's fine and delete my error yeah so these are the standard objects by velocity right uh, these Did are not standard it? objects for example if you see this omni script page this is actually a vf page right so yeah uh, but when you create an omni script that nothing but there is an object in the back end in om uh, in salesforce which is a custom object created by velocity called omni script so whenever i create a new record a new omni script the ui is i mean there is a specific uh, page omni script designer uh, visual force page that is created by velocity which i can use to work with on omni script but ultimately in the back end we are creating a uh, creating an omni script record okay okay these are not uh, uh, different objects or anything uh, these are the extra features that are giving, uh, being given by velocity right they may use whatever they want they may use a visual force page here or they may use some standard fields or some formula fields whatever it is but they are providing that as a uh, they are provide uh, they are actually using lot of salesforce features to provide us this i mean there is a lot of mechanism that goes behind whenever you create an omni script i right all these elements you see are again coming from different objects right so whenever you create an omni script whatever you add into your omni script they all will be created as a child record something like that they can have their own mechanism but all you have to bother about is what velocity is providing to us right so yeah you don't have to go into those details because you don't uh, if you spend more time in understand what velocity is doing there you will not uh, you'll get confused with what you have to do using velocity so yeah this way without any code we can build you know whole lot of pages and templates is the one place where you have to use angular javascript code to add the ui richness right for example in this web page you see there is a back end image and you see everything is getting highlighted in orange and you know there are certain pictures all of these things right so for these kind of additional thing we go for a angular javascript template i mean we'll discuss about how to add where exactly to add how to work with omni script when we actually start the classes right 
now there are certain data tools i mean we are almost uh, closing time but yeah i'll try to explain this whole thing quickly uh, yeah data raptor extract is like a it's a back end tool you can use this in omniscript or you know certain other places right it is basically a replacement of your sql query but in a much more upgraded version right so sql query you have to write a, a query to, in order to fetch records right you have uh, so instead of that we have something called data raptor data raptor extract in uh, velo <coughs> excuse me in velocity which is basically like you can configure you can choose which object you can choose what are the fields you want right and you it will automatically run a query in the back end and extracts the records plus the additional advantage is you can in a single data raptor you can deal with any number of objects which are not even related right for example if for i am building one omni script which requires data for, from almost 10 different objects which are not even related you can use one single data raptor to do deal with all those objects right and you can apply any number of formulas which can be custom made formulas right and there is something called data raptor load which is which performs the dml operations right uh, like insert update and upsert right in order to insert a new record for example here after performing all these actions in this website uh, they ask my account details and everything once i click on create account in the back end they are creating account contact user and they are creating order record all these things right so you can use a data raptor load to you know perform all that all those actions and this is again same thing you can work with any number of objects you can just say that you have some data in the front end right like first name last name and all you just have to define to which object and to which field this data has to be loaded right if, if there is an existing record it will update or if there is a new uh, no record then it creates so it can do all these three insert update and upset operations and data after transform is like uh, usually uh, we work with json uh, format in velocity right so to manipulate your json structures we can use a data after transform we'll discuss about this maybe uh, when we start working with the classes right integration procedures is the you know you can see the highlight of all of these things right you can in as you know you can perform so complex logics uh, in apex class and what if i told you that all of those complex logics can be done in a declarative approach right so you can use an integration procedure to perform all those kind of you know logics and all of that in a, de uh, in a simple declarative approach right for example um, just give me a second i'll uh, using integration procedures you can perform uh, you can expose an api or you can invoke an api or uh, you can use it for you know normal apex controller purposes i'll show you all that uh, just give me uh, some 10 more uh, five more minutes we'll close it uh, if you are getting late right right uh, you can see this particular thing this is uh, nothing but an integration procedure we'll discuss about each of these things like uh, this entire uh, how to work with this whole thing in, maybe in upcoming classes but <coughs> i'll just show you <coughs> i'll just show you what exactly it can do for example you want to perform make an api call right you have to uh, 
invoke an API, you have to write an Apex class and deal with all of that. Right? In integration procedure, there is something called HTTP action, which is provided by Velocity. You can simply drag and drop it over here, <clears throat> and you can give <clears throat> your endpoint that uh, maybe a mule soft URL or you know whatever uh, endpoint you can, and you can define the method name and all, and you can give the parameters or headers which are required, and that's it. It will uh, make the integration call and it will provide us with a response. Right? So this is all you have to do in order to invoke an API. Right? So now you can tell me how much time it takes to invoke an API. Can we say hardly 10 minutes if you have all these details, it's uh, endpoint and all these things. All you have to do is drag and, and drop this here, give a name to it here and give all these endpoints, headers and parameters, that's all. Right? And I'll tell you uh, how complex uh, logic, how you can build complex logics. You can see this is like an Apex class, right? These are all, uh, you know, simple uh, drag and drop components, which, but which are configured for a specific purpose, right? So this whole entire integration procedure deals with add-ons, right? For example, if I add an add-on or update an add-on, or if I'm already an existing customer, I, I may come back and modify my add-on, right? For example, I'm having call a tune as my add-on. I can come back and change my song, right? Uh, or I can subscribe to a new add-on or I can disconnect from an existing add-on. All these things are being taken care by you know this single integration procedure and you can see how uh, how it has been built i mean we'll discuss in detail about how to work with all of this but you can see how it has been built and nowhere a code has been used and entirely built on uh, using uh, uh, drag and drop components on all configurable elements right but if you see, it is actually performing a much more complex logic, right? By dealing with all these kind of add-ons and in a dynamic way, not like we have hard coded anything. It can take care of any, if you add any new add-on or uh, new product uh, itself to your company, still fine, it works for that, right? So this way you can use integration procedures as an exact replacement for your Apex class. And most of, but all of that is a simple configuration thing. You drag from the left-hand side into the middle and you configure how that uh, element is working on the left right-hand side. Right? So that's about your integration process. Finally, calibration procedures is nothing but it is specifically used for insurance domain to perform some Insurance requires a lot of, you know, mathematical calculations in the back end, right? So all of that can be done using these calculation procedures. Even telecom domain is required? It's uh, some cases, they, I mean, it's a rare case scenario where it is required, but yeah, it is quite useful whenever, wherever it is used. Yeah, in telecom domain as well, some places, uh, maybe some projects uh, to go to uh, go to an extent where they deal with the inventory also in Salesforce, right? So basically, to calculate those inventories, uh, all those things, we can use calculation procedures. Right. Uh, so that's about your velocity. I mean most of the uh, what we are going to do when we start with training is most of the people they just uh, uh, most of the places they just discuss about these uh, velocity components and that uh, they say that that's all about velocity but what we do here is this uh, as far as i am concerned this is just one part of velocity right so we'll work with each and every single one of these and we'll try to understand how each and every single element works in each of these components which you see here and we'll try to work with a real-time example and uh, that's all just in a part of order capture only right 
there are whole other things that needs to be dealt with right we all we are going to discuss about all these things like how to configure a product how to define a pricing and how to you know display it on the ui using order capture and eventually how to manage it once the order has been placed so we'll discuss about all of these things all these uh, specific things in our training and with a you know practical example and yeah as far as scope is concerned you don't have to worry about uh, where velocity is going to be in you know next 5 years it's going very strong most uh, all these top telecom companies and insurance clients are currently using it right if you say it's almost 200 plus 250 plus clients are already using velocity we have too many uh, projects that are available and yeah as part of our training once we are done with everything uh, uh, we'll provide certain you know re required documents and certain basic features as a data packs which you can install and work with any time you want and yeah certain how to documents i mean how to work with each of these things like cpq or ppc or all these things yeah any questions or anything so far anything you want a clarification yes dilip yeah so velocity cpq is related to salesforce cpq or any extra functional is there velocity yeah it's CPQ. the salesforce cpq only but they have velocity has customized it for you know their own purpose so here cart api means is a testing purpose right the cart api is cart api is not for testing purpose for example uh, one practical example i can say is Mm, yeah if you go to this let's say amazon itself for that matter uh, as a user i come in here to this website and i choose all these products and i go to this cart and just before proceeding to buy i close this right that means if you create an order here itself i mean so from the time user start uh, you know choosing the products itself you are creating a scrap order right Uh, unnecessarily you have create an order which doesn't even uh, required at a later point of time right you have to delete them again so what velocity is doing here is uh, they have created a, a new concept called basket right which only stays in velocity server right uh, only like a temporary memory cache memory you can say only after making a payment that basket will be converted into a order record in salesforce until that time it is just there in a uh, velocity server you can say it's like a temporary memory right so in order to do that uh, they need uh, uh, in order to convert this basket into a order record in salesforce right at a point of time you have to have an apex class or something which performs that whole logic right i'll show you one example uh, yeah i understood i understood yeah i mean uh, i'll just uh, simply show you one uh, example of how much coding is required in order to build a you know order record uh, after getting the details from a customer right yeah this is that one piece of uh, one particular thing uh, this is the test class sorry yeah this is that one thing and you can see it requires almost 2000 uh, i mean approximately 2000 lines of code are required to do this but what velocity is doing is simply providing all that entire functionality as an api you just pass the basket key and it converts it into an order order line items and it provides you with the ids so it is making you avoid all those uh, you know code all those uh, amount of uh, lines of codes which you have to write so that way there are so many other functionalities like applying promotions or applying offers again you have to do with a lot lot of uh, pricing and thing and all you have to validate all that but all you can do is simply call an api from uh, velocity and that will take care of all the well including the validation as well okay fine yeah 
Any other questions? So one, one more. So how to deploy everything you have to show, right? Okay. So to deploy. Deployment. Okay, deployment? Yeah, in which in which tool we are using deploy to? Uh, we, so there is a specific tool for uh, velocity components, only velocity components, uh, VDX. You can use that uh, VDX tool to deploy um, Salesforce component as well, but yeah, it is built specifically for deploying uh, velocity components. Uh, so do we require any uh, classes or something to be written uh, in background for any velocity component? Most probably for most of your user stories or requirements, I would say at least 90% you don't require any code. There are, I mean, how much ML uh, these uh, velocity or uh, these people try, there's always certain requirements they will not be able to meet. So in those specific uh, uh, places, you may have to use Apex code. Like there's only a 10% chance. Okay. And in CPQ, uh, what all things will be covered? Uh, we'll, uh, we'll not discuss about the CPQ, which is uh, actually there as a managed package. We'll discuss about velocity CPQ, how to you know define a various types of pricings and various types of, uh, basically how to uh, define your, I mean, in velocity, EPC and CPQ work together, right? How your product is configured and how you do the pricing. So that part we'll discuss, not the actual, uh, you know, ma managed package, CPQ. We'll discuss about velocity CPQ. Okay. How to pricing a uh, product and how to, you know, work with various combinations and all. Okay, so, so are you uh, going to provide the documents uh, for this? Any yes, yes, sure. At the end of the training, um, for each of these things, I mean, for order capture, there are multiple things, Omniscripts, cards, data adapters and all. For all of these uh, things, how to work with and all. And we provide certain documents for order management, CPQ and EPC. Basically, at a later point of time, when you want to, you know, work with them, you can just refer those documents. Oh, one more. Mm -hmm. So, is there any related to pre-warming? What is oh, the pre-warming? Pre-warming in velocity. Mm, I didn't get that. Pre-warming. Mm, I'm not sure about what exactly that is. Okay. Uh, what what is that? So I have pre warming pre warming right. No, I have seen somewhere velocity pre warming. Okay. Okay, I'm not sure of that. I haven't heard of it. Okay. Well. Yeah. Fine now. And what will be the duration of all this? I will require at least 30 classes, you know, one or two here and there, uh, plus or minus, but at least 30 sessions are required. So yeah, uh, five weeks, every day, one hour. So weekends also is there, right? Uh, weekends, weekends are excluded. That's why we are going for up to five, five weeks or five and a half, you can say. Mm -hmm. And we also provide, I mean, if you don't have org access, you can uh, uh, get it from here. And we'll also provide uh, Velocity Salesforce success community is open source, but Velocity success community uh, is not. So we'll provide those credentials as well. Yeah, any other questions or anything? I believe uh, uh, I started learning Salesforce on 2019 uh, Salesforce admin. Mm -hmm. Then I didn't undo any job in Salesforce actually. Uh, so right now I'm starting like, uh, you know, learning Velocity. Mm -hmm. So how I need to be like, you know, uh, because I don't have a good background on IT. 
Mm -hmm. So how to develop my career if I go for velocity, is it good or not? Uh, 